Yo, yo, it's your boy Flip the Nero. We live with Hot New Hip Hop. Let's get it. Guala Gang. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Growing up, I grew up in Canarsie. That was my neighborhood. My upbringing was was very strict, you know what I'm saying? I have very strict parents. Oh man, I was a little badass kid, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was just, I got kicked out of my first school for defending my cousin. Some nigga was just talking crazy to her. I had to put the hands on him, you know what I'm saying? Second time I got kicked out, it was some dumb shit. Uh, all I know is it was me and a group of my homies. I ended up doing some stupid shit, we got kicked out. Yeah. I went to a lot of schools, I got kicked out of a lot of schools. Um, I was a little badass kid, you know what I'm saying? Selling weed and shit, skateboarding. You know what I mean? Just doing my thing, but I was always like a loner though. And just always trying to find my own way. So I was listening to like Sitting Sideways by like Paul Wall. Like I was listening to Bankroll Fresh. Uh, Jada Kiss still feel me. A lot of Haitian music, a lot of compa. You know what I'm saying? My parents always used to listen to Haitian music. They never used to let me listen to rap. They were very strict on the whole rap thing, but I couldn't help it, bro. Like Jada Kiss, I had to listen to Jada Styles. I had to listen to Outkast, all of them. You know what I'm saying? Like I was just turned up. You know what I mean? And they always used to like come in my room, and be like, "Yo, turn that shit the fuck off." But I never gave a fuck though. Honestly, I, I can't put a time frame on it. I don't know. I just remember like writing poetry and then putting the poetry towards a beat and then just going with this shit. But like, I could say about like 12, 13, bro, like when I really started hitting the block, was when shit started to like take off. I don't remember what it was called, but I rapped it to Nicki Minaj's beat, Moment of Life. I was inspired by Meek Mill. I think Meek Mill did a freestyle too. I remember that shit vividly. Shout out to my brother, Joey Badass. But I'm um, pretty much, you know what I'm saying? Los is my engineer. He had just introduced me to a lot of people who was like in contact with Joey pretty much. So Joey caught a hold of my music and was just like, yo, this shit is dope. He presented it to like the whole pro era. The whole pro era was fucking with this shit. And then he introduced my music to Johnny Shipes, which is like my big brother, the owner of Cinematic. And Johnny was just like, yo, I fuck with you, bro. I fuck with the vibe, just keep working. And from then on, you know what I'm saying? Boom. DJ Khaled, so how I met Khaled was through my big brother, Sav, you know what I'm saying? Sav, I mean, that's my manager. He just kept taking my music and planting seeds on everyone, you know what I'm saying? And it just started to grow, you know what I mean? And Khaled was just like, yo, I fuck with this kid. Like, I want to meet up with him. So when I met up with Khaled, he just kept expressing how much he fucks with my sound and like he fucks with my creative process. And he goes, Flip, Flip, you a star, keep going, don't stop. Like he stresses me not to stop and to be as creative as I can possibly be. Like he, he, the way he goes about it is crazy, bro. He's very energetic. Like we was in the studio till like four in the morning, I think three, four in the morning, bro. He was just like energetic. And I'm looking at him like, fuck, <laughs> fuck, how you do, how you do this shit? Leave me alone is a blessing, bro. It was just like, the feeling was overwhelming. I remember being, I was on tour with Tory Lanez. I was inside of the rental that we had. It was me and my homies. We were still on tour, you know what I'm saying? Fucking, I woke up in the whip and literally I saw someone like write some shit. It was just like, yo, Drake threw you in his story. It was just a comment. I was just like, mm, get the fuck out of here. I don't believe that shit. But something told me to go to Drake's shit, you know what I'm saying? I went to this nigga's shit. I'm going through his story. I see artists that inspire me, artists and songs that inspire me, you know what I'm saying? I'm scrolling through it. I see everyone else and then I just see my shit like in the middle of the shit. I threw the phone, bro. I just started going crazy, bro. I called my family members. I'm like, yo, Drake threw me his shit. My pops like, what the fuck going on? I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna call you that. I call my brother. I'm like, yo, bro, Drake threw me his shit. He's like, you lying. I'm like, I'm dead ass, bro. It was crazy, bro. Crazy. When I did the on the run tour, I opened up for Jay Z and Beyonce. That was amazing. Shit, it was crazy. That was like 70,000 people, bro. And I performed in New York City. I I just performed at NYU. It was crazy. Crazy, it's love. So T Pain, that's my OG. That's the big bro right there. Um, the track is all I want. You know what I'm saying on his new album, yo, it's dope, bro. Like he was just like, the process behind writing the song was actually I linked up with him at his crib. He's walking me through his crib, showing me everything, and then we went to the stool. And we're in the stool. He's playing mad tracks for me. I was like, yo, bro, this is dope. I wanna hop on this shit. He's like, I right, bet. Bro, I wrote that shit in like 15 minutes. He looked at me and was like, ah, right, yo, flip, lay that shit down right now. Rap this shit. He ran his shit back, he's like, yo, this is fire. I'm like, yo, I'm about to get a track of t Pain. I remember listening to I'm Sprung, Bartender, um, Can't Believe It, 
silver and gold like yo t-pain was very influential man it's a blessing like people see me they look at me and they just be like oh shit like yo that's flip people come up to me and like ask me for pictures and shit but like i kind of try not to let it get to my head i try to stay as humble as i possibly can you know what i'm saying because some people tend to get over their heels with this shit you know i mean they tend to use this shit for like the wrong reasons but, like i try to stay as humble as i could possibly can despite the pedestal like people Place me on, you know what I'm saying? Next two, three months, man, I got this project that's about to drop, man. There's a lot of a lot of singles, a lot of his singles on there. It's fire, bro. I cannot wait to drop this shit. It's gonna it's gonna shake the world. Like it's, it shows the versatility of flip. You know what I'm saying? It shows that I could be the vibe, the leave me alone vibe, and it shows that I can hit you with the intellectual stuff. I could hit you with the emotional stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gon' you gon' fuck with that shit. Yeah, 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 you gon' super fuck with that shit. Second half of 2019, just some shows, killing them shows, more music, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully another project, not hopefully, another project will drop, you know what I'm saying? But it's just, you know what I mean? You know the vibe. Yeah, yeah, you know the vibe. In five, ten years, I wanna be able to have a platform that other artists could be able to step on. I wanna be the helping hand, you know what I'm saying? Like, Open like a record label or some shit. If if not a, if not a record label, just something that could help artists get the understanding about the music game and just build. You know what I'm saying? Like I just want to be an influential character, as opposed to just being someone like who just came to get the guala and then I just did. I want to help. You know what I'm saying? Help the game, as opposed to just being someone to like leak the funds from the game.